I, I just change all of these variable names to reference chocolate. I know that it seems silly, but I've heard that it's good to have a fudge factor. These two blocks of source code do the same thing. There are actually an infinite number of programs that you could write that would have the same functionality, take the same input and produce the same output. And in some sense, they're all equivalent. All this source code is going to be crunched by a compiler and turned into a set of binary instructions for the computer to process. And all this nice formatting and the names of the variables and just about everything that you see here is going to be discarded in the creation of that executable file. If you were of a reductionist frame of mind, you might say that there's no real difference between them. So long as they behave the same way in the CPU, they're identical, and there's no practical reason to prefer one over the other. But source code isn't really written for computers. It's written for programmers. It's written for people to read and understand and modify. The style and structure of source code can be just as important in the long run as its functionality. Write a program that's a little buggy and you might have to spend a fair amount of time fixing it, but a program with code that's opaque and overly complicated might mean throwing the whole thing out and starting over from scratch if you ever need to tweak it. Even if the two code blocks might be no different to a computer, a programmer might spend their time rewriting this block of code to this one, making it easier to understand, reordering and rearranging how the algorithm is specified to make it more intuitive, cleaner, more straightforward or transparent, all without altering how the program ultimately works. This restructuring of code is a process called refactoring. If you're an offensively amateurish coder like me, you're probably thrilled if the messy patchwork of stack overflow responses you've copy-pasted together works at all, never mind trying to make it readable or elegant. But even if you're not a coder, the principle of restructuring something to make it better without changing the fundamental principle of its operation is a thing that you've probably done a fair amount in your life without really thinking about it that way. Take the simple act of sorting your books or creating an acronym for something that you talk a lot about at work. Same contents, same functionality, but somehow different and better. It's not just an aesthetic reshuffling to make things prettier, it's clarifying or instilling a sense of purpose, giving a shape and directionality to something that would otherwise just be a big pile of stuff. Abstracted in this way, there are a few universal aspects of refactoring that stand out, whether you're cleaning up code or changing around your daily routine. First, there's a sort of recategorization, taking things that are treated the same and splitting them up, or taking things that are treated differently and consolidating. Maybe trying to multitask catching up on emails while you're having dinner with your family leaves some confusing ambiguity as to what exactly you're trying to do with that time, and splitting those activities up might make both work more smoothly. Maybe wandering back and forth between the bedroom and the bathroom to shower and brush your teeth, then get your clothes and get dressed, then hang up the towel, can be smoothed out by simply picking the clothes that you want to wear first and bringing them with you to the bathroom. Another aspect of the refactoring mentality is that it can become a sort of reflex, a habit that just sort of happens in the background while you're working on other stuff. You may be familiar with an activity called knolling, a sort of not entirely conscious fidgeting that involves arranging various objects into orthogonal patterns. Some programmers refactor this way as they're reading through code, idly consolidating and massaging things when they're trying to figure out how to move forward. Developing an instinct for refactoring is a good way to counteract code entropy, the seemingly inevitable backslide into hacked together incomprehensible gibberish that just sort of happens as you try to build something that works. Without that process of continuous clarification, code deteriorates. But if everyone who's working on it leaves it a little better than they found it, it improves. The impulse to gently instill some sort of order without drastically changing how things work can also carry over to the real world in ways other than knowing. Noticing something that belongs in a different room and just taking it with you as you go. Tightening drawer pulls and straightening pictures as you pass them. Fixing up punctuation as you review a coworker's email to a client. A certain sort of person might take umbrage at the suggestion that they should clean up someone else's mess without being compensated for their trouble or acknowledged but that's why it's useful to cultivate as a reflex. It's no trouble at all, it just sort of happens. Your environment improves incrementally over time, slowly becoming less chaotic and more intentional just because you're in it. Refactoring also has an intimate reciprocal relationship with functional improvements that actually change how things work to get better efficiency or performance. Vague or confusing code can make it difficult to understand its ultimate purpose and how it goes about doing what it does which in turn makes it hard to see how it could be better. 
In the process of refactoring, potential improvements can suddenly leap out at you in forehead-slappingly obvious ways. You might not realize just how much money you spend on various subscription services until you've taken the time to sort through your transaction history and put them into the same spreadsheet. Once they're all in one place, you're suddenly better equipped to analyze how much you're paying for each versus how much you actually use it. And it's trivial to figure out that you ought to cancel some of them, and which ones. I keep harping on the isomorphic nature of the code before and after refactoring, how the function stays the same even in the midst of reorganization. This isn't just a bit of pedantry to make sure I'm not ranging too far afield in my admittedly broad interpretation. I think it highlights one of the things that really speaks to me about the practice, an extraordinarily humble sort of improvement. Everyone has bright ideas about how to do things, and I can't make air quotes quite big enough here, better. Whether you're talking about economic policy or how to raise kids or whatever, there are countless opinions about what sort of process we need to implement to succeed, and many exceedingly vocal advocates of those opinions. By preserving the existing method, refactoring sidesteps ideological disputes about whether this approach or that approach is what we really ought to be doing. Sure, you might disagree with someone about details regarding which way of expressing an idea is really cleaner, but honing the idea to be exactly what it needs to be is waging war on a different front than the people who argue for this policy or against that practice. It's beating back the uncertainty and confusion that makes it hard to know what it is exactly that we're arguing about. If you can boil a complex idea down to its most essential elements, highlight precisely what it's claiming and why in unambiguous language, You've done everyone on both sides of the debate a great service, and even if you end up deciding it's not for you, you can be content knowing exactly what it is that you disagree with. Hmm. A humble attempt to clarify ideas so that people can think about and discuss them easily. Where have I heard that before? Where do you see opportunities to refactor in your everyday life? How many times do you think I rewrote the script? Do you have a sudden urge to tidy up? Please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to blah blah subscribe blah share. And don't stop thunking.